Hello everyone, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour. We're, we're trialling a new name Thursday every week, 12 till 1 o'clock. Um, we'll have something going on here in the Love Rugby League office. I'm James Gordon. This week, Drew Derbyshire, the main man, is here. Uh, no Dave again this week, unfortunately. We'll drag him back in the weeks to come, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, we're going to try and make this... I mean, we've been doing it all season, haven't we, around this time. But 12 till 1, we're going to call it the Rugby League Lunch Hour. We'd love for you to join us live every Thursday to join in the debate and stimulate the debate. Um, as always, it will be released as a podcast and on YouTube as well anyway, so if you can't make it for the 12 till 1, you can still catch up at your leisure afterwards. Um, we're going to tweak the format a little bit over the coming weeks, so we're always open to suggestions as to what, you're, as to what you want to see. Um, in this hour, we're going to talk about a lot about Great Britain, uh, and then we'll look ahead to the, some of the key games for this weekend. Um, before we get started, Dave has been in the office this week and he's left me a little note to say, can we plug the Our League app games this weekend, the live games on Saturday? It's Keith Cougars against London Scholars. That's a 3pm kickoff on Saturday on the Our League app. On Sunday, it's St. Helens against Wigan in the Women's Challenge Cup. That's a 12 o'clock midday kickoff there, so that'll be a, a cracking game. Um, it's at the Totally Wicked Stadium as well, yeah. isn't it, I think? Um, and then on Sunday afternoon, Bradford against Halifax, a repeat of the Challenge Cup quarter-final from a few weeks ago. That is the live game on our league. Three o'clock kickoff off Sunday afternoon. There's a lot of Bradford games on our league. <laughs> there is a lot, isn't there? You can tell we've got the, the biggest fan base in the whole league. Okay, is that what you're going with? Uh, certainly so. Well, um, so... We obviously, if you're seeing us on Tuesday, me and Drew, we're at the Totally Wicked Stadium for Wayne Bennett's first press conference as Great Britain coach. Um, we did a little bit of a live after that as well, which had some of our thoughts in. So if you've not seen that, it was a couple of minutes long. Go and have a look at that. But we'll have another chat about it now. Obviously, a lot's developed since the press conference. We've had, obviously, all the, all the stuff out of the press conference has come out about heritage players, about Blake Austin, Lachlan Coop. We've had um, the news about Paul Wellens. Um, not going to be part of the team and I mean not that he would have been because he was England but that's another debate um, and then we've had this statement from Robert Elston haven't we where um, he's basically moaned at Wayne Bennett for saying that Ryan Sutton has got better because he's playing in the NRL before I ask your thoughts Drew I'll give my I'll chuck my two pen at that year it, 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 it's, pe it's unbelievably petty it's taken the headlines away from what was a positive story. Wayne Bennett actually said in his press conference that he thought Super League was far better than it's given credit for, which wasn't mentioned in Elston's piece. And regardless of, you know, OK, you ever want to talk Super League up, but you can't deny that the NRL is a better competition. I completely agree with you, James. I, I think it's... it's this, what, this is the kind of stuff that makes Rugby League with Tim Pot. Um, and this is kind of what drags us and keeps us in the mud at times. Um, it's just totally uncalled for, this statement from uh, Robert Elston. It's, I think it's clear to see from, from, from everyone as an outsider that there's a, there's a, um, a little bit of a argy barger, shall we say, between Super League and, and the RFL. And this, this was just uh, another swipe uh, at the RFL because obviously the, the Great Britain uh, team comes under the RFL uh, rather than obviously Super League. Uh, I, I just think it was an uncalled for statement uh, and it just took the shine off uh, what was a very positive afternoon uh, on Tuesday um, at the Total of Wicked Stadium. We, we got a lot of stuff from it. We was uh, speaking to Regan Grace about his, his opportunities obviously with him being a, a Welshman, uh, about his opportunities of, of playing for Great Britain and whether he thinks he can make it. And there was loads of good stories going on. Wayne Bennett, very complimentary of Super League as well as you mentioned. Uh, yeah, it was actually saying there's 20 or 30 blokes, I think it were. I don't mean to, to quote him exact, but I think, I think he said there's over 20 guys um, that in Super League that could easily play in the NRL. He said every one of the, the, the players team, yeah. in, in, in the England team could play in the NRL were, without uh, question. Um, so it was very complimentary of our, of our players. And he makes one remark about uh, Ryan Sutton, which I think is a completely fair remark, that... If you play in the, the sports elite competition, of course you're going to be a better player. It's, I mean, it's like, it's I like, mean, the thing is, though, is that Ryan Sutton could, in theory, have been a better player this season in Super League anyway. You know, it's not as if 
it's not as if players don't improve year on year anyway. If Ryan Sutton had played for Wigan this year, the chances are he might, well, I mean, Wigan's situation accepted, but he could have stepped up another level this season, couldn't he, even if he was at Wigan? Well, exactly, and to be fair, Ryan Sutton's killing it in the NRL, isn't it? And he's, he'll, he'll probably be my Great Britain uh, team if I was the, the coach, Wayne Bennett. He, he could have been killing it anywhere this season if he was at Wigan. It, more, more than likely, he would have been a better player this year because you just get better with age anywhere. Um, so, but I think I think Wayne Bennett's right. You're playing the world's best competition in rugby league, so of course you're going to get better. If you compare it with football, if you're playing in the, if you're playing in, I don't know, the, the, the French league or the or the La Liga, uh, one season and you and you move to the Premier League, which is the elite competition in world football, then you you're going to be playing against better players, better athletes, and you're going to be challenging yourself um, more in in the elite competition, and that's what Ryan Sutton's doing. Um, so I think, I think Wayne Bennett's right to, re- to make that remark. He wasn't saying Super League's an awful standard, was he? No. Yeah, he, he had full respect uh, for Super League. And um, it, 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 I mean, Bob this is... just come out with this petty comment um, about just having a, having a pointless dig at Wayne Bennett. This is a systematic problem now that Rugby League finds itself in where you've got sort of, I mean, Loosely, what all that's happened is effectively Robert Elston's gone as Super League chief exec. He's basically brought over most of the RFL staff into Super League. The RFL's still there on skeleton numbers and still has Ralph Rimmer as CEO. What has actually changed? I mean, realistically, all you've now got is whereas we, whereas Rugby League fans were annoyed before that they had Nigel Wood at the top of the tree earning a load of money, we've now got Robert Elston earning a load of money there. And Ralph Rimmer earning a load of money there, and it's like, what? It should, what? It There's be, no joined up thinking, is it? It should, it should just be under one, shouldn't it? I I, I believe they shouldn't have, uh, have had that little breakaway between Super League and, and the RFL because it makes the TV deal a lot more complicated because obviously they're trying to get championship rights as well. Um, so I think it, it just makes it all complicated. And I know the two are at loggerheads. It's it's clear to see that the, the constantly just digging into each other. Uh, not just Super League to, to the RFL, the, the, <laughs> there are roles reversed. They're just digging into each other. It should just be one under one. Like the NRL is, it's just under one. It's, you know I mean, I mean? The, the thing, I mean, I suppose you can sort of see why it's got to the stage that it has, but then at the same time, unless unless there's any unless there's any clear benefits to it being the way it's, what, you know, what is the right. point? And I think Rugby League. Rugby league's in this it's, massive it's, situation where it, it 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 sort of doesn't. It's trying to be something it isn't. When reality is, is if we just look at it and say, right, okay, we know the NRL is superior to Super League, but we want to bridge that gap. You know, I don't see the harm in admitting that. Likewise, I mean, I was involved in a Twitter discussion as I always am with someone this week about how the Lancashire Yorkshire rivalry is a is detriment to the game because. The clubs are all busy squabbling amongst themselves to grow it. But then I sort of said, well, I think that is a good example of where the game's strength is the York Lancashire York's rivalry. But the game, rugby league in general, seems to use that as a negative against itself mm. because obviously it's so obsessed, you know, obviously it doesn't want to be an M62 yeah. spot. But, but okay, yeah, it's an M62 yeah. sport primarily. Obviously, there's plenty of other teams, but that's a strength for the sport. But for some reason, rugby league has this obsession with making it out to be a weakness. Yeah. And I think that's a, you know, you, you look at Australia, for instance, obviously they have state of origin, don't they? Ultimately, Queensland and New South Wales, they are the main states where rugby leagues play. In, you know, obviously you've got Melbourne and Victoria and stuff, but other states in, in Australia don't have rugby like league Perth, teams. It's, yeah. it's broken new ground this year by taking a game to Perth, yeah, but like, it's like, like we've done but, previously, but it's predominantly played in, in yeah, and it's like what, what rugby league does in this country, it, it would be aching to Australia basically saying, like, scrapping New South Wales and Queensland, we don't want to focus on them, we want to focus on all these other areas. And with it, they, they, they just they sort of like strangle a key part of the game, I think. No, I, I do agree, and, I, and I've said it pre- on previous occasions and previous shows of this that I, I will see Yorkshire, uh, Lancashire come back or return or be recreated in in a way because I, I think it's it's the strongest part of our sport in the north isn't it and I think we should we should allow the heart of fans to uh, accept that even though I am an expansionist as well and I'd like to see the likes of Toronto thrive and, and New York thrive and Ottawa and so on uh, I still think we should have, have them too because this is where the sport were created in the north and, and we shouldn't shy away from the, the fact that 
that were northerners. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're, I think we sometimes we were speaking about this the other week when we took the game to to the new camp at Barcelona. We were speaking about the the fact that it doesn't always have to be what happens next. What happens next? Do we have to do something else? You just say, you, I think we should live for it for the moment. If, if we never go to Barcelona again. We never go to Barcelona again. But we could, we can sit, we can look back and say, well, we did that. That was a positive time for rugby league. We don't have to keep saying, oh, what's next? What we should we should stick to should, we should stick to what we know. I think Lancashire York should be brilliant, but obviously that's it. That's a different story by playing thirty. Yeah, 30 I mean, I mean, obviously there's there's issues with the number of games and stuff, and you know, obviously Cumbria. I know Kyle Amor tweeted us this week about having a Cumbrian team as well. But I mean, I suppose you could you could make the argument. Well, Lancashire and York could play against Wales. They could play against France. You know, like Great Britain, for instance, are on tour, aren't they, this year? Um, so there's very limited games over here in terms of internationals. So why couldn't you put a representative team together to do that? Well, Li- likewise, you could say when Australia tour next yeah, season, Australia concerned. could play a Lancashire yeah. select team. They could yeah. play because don't forget now where, the, where you've got the Great Britain team is the Great Britain team ultimately or the England team, whatever you want to call it, is ultimately more than half is now playing in the NRL. Mm. So even if you took the what we what we say. 12 best players away from the Lancashire and Yorkshire combined teams because they'll be an England team you're still going to have a decent team there um, so you'll start at current but obviously we're, we're not going to <laughs> say any names that might not make the Great Britain squad but the, the players who aren't in the England squad so the likes of Liam Watts he could, he could be like Yorkshire's talisman yeah. um, and he could by his performances for for Yorkshire against the Kangaroos he, he could maybe mould himself into, the, into a Great Britain player yeah, I mean, and obviously it all needs a bit of joined up thinking and it just, you know, know there's been a bit of threatening of this. If you look at what's happened in the past decade, there's been a lot of talk about trying to get an international calendar in place, but it's not happened. Mm. We've had it loosely, but we're still only announcing games a few months in advance. There's still, like I say, too many games in the domestic calendar to suit it. The split between Super League and the RFL is presumably only going to make that worse because... Ultimately, Super League's now about making money for Super League. So, if Yorkshire and Lancashire played, or if England played, or if ever, that makes no odds to Super League. They're just bothered about their competition. Yeah. Whether Super League will turn around and they try and own the Lancashire-Yorkshire thing, a bit like how Origin's technically owned by the NRL, isn't it? You know, maybe that's your way forward. But, you know, the joint, it needs to join up thinking, whatever you do. I like the kits as well, the Yorkshire and Lancashire kits at Academy Origin and Women's Origin. Very nice. Um, well, that's the thing. It's like, well, why is it good enough for the academy and yeah, for the women? But then the absolute pinnacle of the sport, the elite of the sport. You know, could you could you imagine a you know a series Wednesday night, get it on TV when football season's not on? You know, if, and and you know we're not just talking about Lancashire and Yorkshire as well. There's plenty now of players coming through in the south and, yeah, and well, other this areas. This is what I was just going to say. You could, you could actually have like a southern base select. 13 as well so you don't all, all have to be from London uh, you could have anywhere <laughs> anywhere below Lancashire Yorkshire yeah, uh, and you, they, you they could put a decent team together for, couldn't you like you've got Sargentson you've got Kieran Dixon well you could have is, it, is Davis from Birmingham area so you could have like the, the like Matty Davis from yeah, Boynton you you know, there's plenty of you know you've got, area, you've, got, so you have, you've got Tony Club you've got Louis McCarthy Scars you've got a raft of players now that Sam Tompkins could play for for a, course, a, a London, yeah, a, London a, a, a southern team. Depends so, what depends what the eligibility rules are. Well, I mean, he's yeah, born in Milton Keynes, so I mean, you have yeah. it. Um, but you know what I mean. It, we have got scope to do that, but it just feels like, you know, we're obsessed with having, you know, the, we're obsessed with Hull KR playing Warrington a million times or Warrington. But, like you see that Hull KR played Warrington at Hull KR three times in two months. Now, I understand they had a cup game in there, but even without that cup game, to play the same fixture twice in as many months is ridiculous. Mm. Uh, I, I was um, with our colleague, uh, well, he's not, he's not our colleague, but with our office partner, Steve, who was going through the Salford Red Devils fixtures uh, yesterday, and they're, they're playing teams three or four times before the end of the season. They, so I think Salford have got to play Warrington three times before the end of the season. And I, I don't know if they've already played them. 
Um, well, no, they want Shiller play for you, don't yeah. they? Yeah. So, so the, well, they've got to. So they are playing him a couple more times before the end of the season, and I think it's Wigan who have to play a whole FC a couple more times as well before the end of the season. Yeah, it's and just, that, and that's before the playoffs even start. I mean, I think it's, a, it's an obvious. Well, well, we'll talk about the comments now, but I mean, it, it's an obvious thing that if you remove the loot fixtures, all of a sudden you've got this space to have representative games, haven't you? Yeah. So Definitely. yeah, go on. So I've, what I've, I've really. never been a fan of loop games. I think they're absolutely awful. But uh, we've got Fred Parkinson saying Robert Elston is just a puppet for certain Super League club owners. Uh, Greg Roll said, "What a weekend! Three surprise results. It's good to see see Swinton winning it to lose. Fantastic result for them. Uh, Barrow beating Halifax and Hull KR beating Warrington." Uh, very very good performance from Swinton. In- interesting point Fred makes about Elston being puppets for certain Super League chairmen. I'm not saying. Well, I mean we we could go down this road. Does it link to Amy McManus a day before the Wayne Bennett press conference basically came out and moaned about him for poaching yeah, Luke Thompson? It was, so yeah. is do you think that it, might have a little bit of something to do with the statement yeah. maybe? Uh, I think there's definitely something there to, to do with the statement because obviously he came out just the day before, a couple of hours I think the re- the report was published, I think the report was published in the morning of the uh, Great Britain press conference and it was basically or Emma McManus warning that Wayne, be- Wayne Bennett's been linked with him at South, uh, Luke Thompson at South Sydney Rabbit Holes and Emma McManus just came out and said well he's under contract, uh, he's a Super League player, he's, he's a St. Helens player until his contract's due. Uh, it kind of warned Wayne Bennett not to uh, not to persuade his players while they're in the Great Britain camp, and uh, that Elston statement appears what nine hours later. It's very difficult. I mean, it must be very difficult though, because you know maybe it's an argument that Great Britain and England or whoever shouldn't have a club coach as their coach because it must be difficult because obviously Wayne Bennett's day to day is his South Sydney coach. He's thinking about South Sydney's next game. He's thinking about who he wants to recruit next season. Well, but he, he says he watches every Super League televised game, doesn't he, uh, yeah. Wayne Bennett? So, say there's, there's three televised games, I don't know what, he will watch them. No, but, but, but the point, so. point being, if you're in camp with, you know, if you've got a squad of 23 players, you're seeing them X hours a day, every day. It's very difficult for is a coach it, not what, to... What I do find is, I mean? is strange is George Burgess, who's at South Sydney Rabbit Hole, obviously playing under Wayne Bennett at club level. He's been told he's not getting a new deal for next year, right. so that that must be pretty pretty strange for mm. for George Burgess because he'll obviously be wanting a Great Britain spot, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's just been told by Wayne Bennett, who's his international coach, that he's, he's not he's not good enough to, to get a new deal at the Rabbitohs for next year. I mean, I mean the NRLs. Are, I, I would, my impression is the NRLs a bit different to Super League in terms of the way they manage the salary cap, isn't it? So sometimes they get rid of players because. Purely because they're on. Yeah, because it, it's not necessarily because. So, and I'm not saying that's the case with George Burgess. Well, if, if George but, Burgess came to the Super League, you'd have to be on a marquee contract, wouldn't Yeah, you? But, but my point being is that maybe they've decided they need to get moving along to create space to sign somebody else in a different position. You know, mm-hmm. like, so if there's a half back that's come available or whatever, you know, um, maybe, got, maybe it's to do with that. We've got, got a few more, <laughs> quite a few on Robert Elston. Uh, Stephen Hall says Robert Elston equals myth. Uh, well, I mean, it's well, very hard. It's very hard not to argue. It's very hard to argue that because it's like, well, where? How is Super League any different than where it was twelve months ago? The only good thing I would say that's happened is the the scrapping of the Super Eight has breathed life into the relegation. Well, that, that was made by the Super League owners, wasn't it? Not necessarily. Well, yeah. Else. Well, not Elsa. No, uh, no. But that's what I'm saying. I'm saying the only difference between now and twelve months ago is that basically. Um, I mean, it's. it's it seems that Robert Ellison's main job for, for Super League is getting that TV deal sorted, isn't it? And making it benefit the sport, benefit all Super League. Well, is that, is that, does that warrant a six-figure salary, you know, 400 grand or whatever it's reported he's on? Does, you know, okay, yeah, it's a big deal, but are you, you know, what would have happened if Elston wasn't there? Who would have, you know, who negotiated the deal? We know Nigel Wood did, but... Why, why is having someone on a 400 grand a year salary or whatever it is going to help that? Because, you know, there's not that many TV companies that you have to have the conversation with, is there? You know, unless he's on the phone to him 24 hours a day, you know, surely he's got time to do other things as well. We've not seen any new sponsors really come in. You know, we've not seen, 
you know, all we've had is a massive upheaval in terms we're, of we're staff not, moving over. We've not seen any blue chips, have we, as well? I know, I, I, I'm keen to, like, shy away from just mentioning blue chip all the time, but we've not seen any huge companies get involved, have we? Apart from Betford, who have been... Great but they were there anyway. They were, they were there anyway. already there. I mean, that, I think that's what I'm saying. We've, we've not seen any fresh spot. We've not, like, no, no disrespect, but we've obviously seen Ron Seal on the kit, but we've not seen any higher profile like, like we see. But in, is that in, something? In, is in that something? Have, like, all yeah, all but years. is that something that Elston is looking at? Because obviously he's CEO, you know, I think, you know, and obviously we don't know necessarily what goes on behind closed doors, but it just seems that. Nothing that appears to be getting much better than it was before. You know, we've lost the coverage in the sun which as a result. A disgrace, you know, which, 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 which is, is no matter what your opinion yeah. of the sun is, ultimately yeah. it's the most read newspaper in the UK, and you know the website's popular and whatever. Very and, popular. You know, that's uh, one of the main what, what sources. Whatever your opinion on the sun is, uh, it doesn't really affect this um, situation because Gary Carter, very very respected uh, rugby league journalist, isn't he? Uh, always, always provides good coverage. Um, and more to the point, he's always there. You know, yeah. he's always at the press conferences. He's always at games. You know, he he's in Barcelona with yeah. us. At, you know, at his own expense and stuff. And it's like, if you take away these people that are flying the flag for the game, you're not left with much. much we've, left. All, we've already seen nationals leave rugby union in in recent times. We, we, we've rugby seen league. the times. Uh, rugby, rugby, <laughs> rugby league. Uh, I've been poached here by rugby union. I'm yeah, only love rugby I'm, 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 only, <coughs> I'm only messing. We've got a couple more comments. Ben Hugo says he likes Elston. So we've got a couple of uh, a couple of mixed reactions. Louis Bank says Elston was employed. There's a lot of super league. Didn't know how the RFL were running the competition, and uh, now we have a huge divide, which is no good for the game at any level. Yeah, well, we'll see how that pans out over the coming months. We'll move on from. Ste- Ste- oh, well. <laughs> We've got a few comments here coming in. Okay, Stephen Stephen Hall says, "Can anyone spot the difference pre and post super league?" Well, that's just, yeah, just just speaking about. There's, yeah. there's not much really. No. That is the else else no, the, the, the Super League owners, the Super League owners were were the main um, people who changed the the structure of the, from going from the Super Eights to uh, yeah, to the Eights. No, um, maybe we're being a bit unfair. You know, maybe we are being a bit unfair, expecting something to have changed in twelve months. I, you know, I don't know. But yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. I, th- I guess the thing is, is it doesn't strike you that there's something massive on the horizon. Now, if if Robert Elston comes back in six months and says, right, we've got a new hundred million pound TV deal with BT yeah. or whatever, then great, fine. But until something like that happens, I think the jury is going to be out. Uh, go, uh, Don Hunt says, oh, I think yeah, there's a, c- a couple of people talking about the, the internationals at the weekend. Don Hunt says, gutted there doesn't seem to be any. Uh, UK TV coverage of the internationals from down under this weekend. I've been trying all week to um, to find out of people, find out of people in the media. If the the Tonga Test match against New Zealand is going to be on on, on Sky uh, this weekend because obviously they they have a Sky have a deal with the uh, the NR, uh, Fox, Fox Sports yeah. to show the uh, the NRL got to clear my throat. Um, <laughs> is that cold water? But <laughs> no, I've got a bit of water here, but. Uh, the NRL is, is obviously not test matches, so it's currently um, the test matches aren't, aren't being shown on Sky Sports, or they don't. They, they, they've not said anything. But, but can I say Cook Islands against South Africa is being streamed on YouTube? It is. That is on Friday. And then of course Brad it's Takirangi, who's, who's uh, previously played for New Zealand in Parramatta. Eels uh, star centre half back. He's a very very good player for the Cook Islands. That, that's on Saturday, and of course it's State of Origin on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So a nice Sunday morning treat for everyone. Ten to eleven is kick off our time. Sure um, is. Obviously so, New South Wales load the changes to their team. Um, keep, but keep your eye out on the uh, rugby league on TV section on the rugby to see if anything changes on the Pacific Test. I, I hope I hope they're on, but the Sky have, have not said anything so far. But I think it was last year. I remember that it was a similar situation, and they only announced it um, the day before or on the day that, that they were being so shown. What, what forgot? Tonga, New Zealand. Uh, Lebanon versus Fiji and Papua New Guinea versus Samoa. Mm. Yeah, so that, the the 
Well, his fingers crossed for some Saturday morning rugby league. That's oh, hopefully, saying. hopefully, because uh, he always likes seeing the the Akers as well before the game. Oh, of course. Um, move on from internationals. We'll talk about some other news this week. Scott Moore has swapped Rochdale for Swinton in the championship. A good pickup for Swinton, and I think Scott Moore's tweeted saying he doesn't want to move for the rest of his career. Now, obviously, he's had a few clubs. He's done a bit of bird. Um, good player. Rochdale have been all. How old is he? Thirty-one. Scott? Oh right, so yeah, so still he's, got a few years. He's in got him. a couple of years. Oh, it's a solid signing for Swinton, isn't it? Uh, he's predominantly an hooker and he's been playing half back uh, for Rochdale this season. Then he moved back to hooker, then he went back to half back. So he's, he's done a little bit of chopping and changing position wise for Rochdale. Um, Rochdale have been very very poor out of this season. Rochdale have turned really into a bit of a bit of a shambles. But then have they got because obviously there's talk about the championship expanded. Is it another get out of jail free card for Rochdale in terms of? It depends. It depends if it, if it, if it does expand, then it is a, a get out of jail. Because I mean, you, you know, they sort of got out of jail last season, didn't they? Because well, they can't just it's, it's not good, is it? Though you're just getting pumped every week. Um, mm. It was. A, I said this about witness last season in Super League but <coughs> when they were just losing every oh, single no. week. But <laughs> when they were just losing every single week, I thought it, it just can't be good. This and now they're actually getting more fans through the gates in the championship when when they're a winning side because everyone wants to see the team winning, no matter what. They're doing. There's obviously a little bit of concern that there about what's going to happen to those teams in League One, and you know, ultimately clubs getting strangled to death. I mean, you mentioned witness there, witness. A sort of being strangled a little bit in in championship now, where they've had the parachute payment withheld, they've had their academy money withheld, um, they're being forced to pay back debts of the old club, you know, having not got any of the sponsorship or season ticket money. They're now talking about witness potentially now going part time next season and losing pretty much all of their players because the academy talent they've got that wants to stay full time will be getting hoovered up by by other clubs, and it's like. You know, Widnes ultimately could be a very strong championship team, couldn't they? You know, averaging five, just under five thousand this season through the gate, but strangling them the way that they are being strangled. You know, what what's you know you don't want to you don't want Widnes to go down the same track as an Oldham or a Workington or a Halifax that are being strangled and put down that many times that they've lost what was a regular four or five thousand strong crowd. Which okay, yeah, it's not. Fantastic, but if you had, if you had a club, if you had half the championship getting four thousand, you'd be bloody well, you know, be, yeah. you'd be delighted. Yeah. Is there a concern that rugby league's too, you know, it, it, again, it, maybe it ties back to you know not playing to your strengths, but it shouldn't be strangling the teams that, because you know, even as much small of a town as Witness is, it's still got, it's still, still got potential. Rugby league. Yeah, it's a rugby exactly. league place, and you know, it still could be, like I say, a stable, a solid championship club. Yeah, uh, I 100% agree. I think it's it's probably right that they go part time and they don't try and, and remain full time just for the time being. They might they might decide in a couple of years if the finances are steady and stable that they make that jump up to full time again for a push into uh, the Super League competition. But then again, do, it all it all it all boils down to the structure in my opinion because yeah, the, do, do you extend the championship to 16 teams or do you extend Super League to 14 well I think I mean the thing is the problem you've got is because ultimately it, 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 as it, it, soon as you've got a full time team in the championship all the other teams know that the only way they're going to get out of the championship yeah. is if they go full time whereas if all the championship teams go back to being part time you know it, like if you, if you bump Toronto and Toulouse out of championship now all the remaining teams would be quite happy to be part time wouldn't they mm. You know, and all the, so you know, and if you know, Leah chucking a bit of money at it again now, but you know, you lower the salary cap to a bit more of a reasonable level. You know, you run that as you know, you have Super League your full time league, Championships your part time league, sixteen teams in each is what I'm going with. But, that, that's but again, you need. But the problem is, is now we've got that split between Super League and the RFL. You're yeah, never going to get that joined up thinking. Yeah. This is, this is it. We're still unconvinced, we're, aren't we? That we're, Super League wants Toronto. We're still unconvinced. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot, really, that the, the Super League and the RFL have, have a split because it just makes everything difficult, man. And it all boils down to money. We've got a couple oh, of well. ideas, um, got a couple of questions as well. Uh, care about Clark. We're getting quite a few comments this week. Uh, scrap the golden point for Super League games, it's a dreadful idea. 
I like Golden Point. I think it, I I think the Golden Point games have been brilliant. To now I'm going to raise a point with you here because you know yeah it's exciting. Well, yeah. <laughs> You're exciting. It's exciting by its very nature. But now, listen to me here. London Broncos St Helens the other week. It was great because London Broncos won. But if London Broncos had lost that match in extra time and got zero points, having held St Helens over eighty minutes, what would people have said then? I think it people would have been. Very, but I think people would have been very. It, 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 it hinges on things like that. If St. Helens win that match and London Broncos have got beat after extra time by St. Helens, but have got nothing to show for it. It's tough. I understand that, but what was wrong with a draw? And then also, if a draw's that bad, why is it that Golden Point isn't just played forever? Why is it that after 10 minutes? I mean, not that any, but I think. Was it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was it Huddersfield Castle? What game was it that got quite close to. To the full ten minutes of a week. Who would Casper been playing? Who would Casper been playing? Huddersfield. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Matoti dropped. Huddersfield, wasn't it? Yeah, was it? Was it Huddersfield? But yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. The golden point to me is just something that it it wasn't needed. I, it wasn't. <laughs> but hang on, I'm going to contradict myself a little bit here. It wasn't needed, but it makes it entertaining. I think. I think whatever rules you have should be universal across rugby league. Ah, yeah. And obviously they have it in the yeah. NRL, so you know maybe you know you can see well okay let's have it in Super League, we'll have it in the World Cup Challenge, but then why not have it in Championship? Why not have it in Amateur Game? You know, but go on. Yeah, uh, I, I don't agree with you on the on the, the rules um, regarding Super League and everything in, in the NRL. Um, Matthew Morrison, what are your thoughts on the Aussies playing for Great Britain? Uh, don't you think? He would have jumped uh, at the chance of Australia again, Colin. I think I know your requirements, yeah, James. It's, it, it's very difficult because, you know, yeah, you're right. You know, it, ultimately, if they were in the Australia team, if Australia wanted them, they'd be playing for Australia, but they don't and they aren't. So, I, I'm a bit on the fence because I'm a bit like, yeah, I think you should only pick British players, but ultimately, Heritage is part of sport now and... And ultimately, if you had Jackson Hastings and Blake Austin at half back, you'd imagine <laughs> Great Britain would be a lot better than they were. They would be with whoever they choose from. The Lockwood Coots at full back from England. You know, well, I mean, obviously we've got a few decent full backs anyway. I think if I think I'm, I'm more if it is genuinely going to raise the standard of the team, and it, you know, you could say we've got George Williams, so do you need Blake Austin, or you know, or would you play them both? Do you know what I mean? We've got Gareth with it. I think, I think, as long as the player that we're getting is of a higher quality than what we've got, then okay. But then at the same time, it's a bit like once they play for Great Britain, you know. Because imagine if Blake Austin, or Jackson Hastings, good example, he's quite young, isn't he? If Jackson Hastings plays for Great Britain this year, goes back to the NRL next year, smashes it up, he shouldn't then be allowed to play for Australia or Origin or whatever he wants to do. Well, no, if. if uh... It's it's a difficult situation. It's like split. I think, by my understanding, you can play. Uh, if um, just take Blake Austin for for the example. If Blake Austin plays for Great Britain, yeah, it's different. It's autumn. Britain, yeah. uh, you can still play for Australia next year. Next year. Yeah, because Great but, Britain isn't yeah. isn't a ranked nation. But but if he played for England, then he would not be able to play yeah. for Australia. Yeah. Because um, the, the class is a tier one nation and. Great Britain are a nation, there is a, the, the Rotorian party. Um, but my opinion on heritage players, I, th- I think they should be allowed as long as they want to play for, for Great Britain. I think that's the important aspect. I think Here's one they need to make know. it clear to Kevin Sinfield, the director of rugby at Great Britain, and uh, Wayne Bennett, they need to make it clear that they want to represent the family, they want to represent the heritage, they're not just saying... Oh, oh, you want me to play for Great Britain? Oh, yeah, why not? It is one for you. I want them to want to play for Great Britain. And um, Blake Austin, as the example again, he's, he's come out in, in previous previous months and said uh, that he'd love to go back to Australia and tell his, his grandma, his English grandma, uh, that he represented her nation and he'd, he'd love to see her, her reaction to that. Which she's, not got she's, a phone, she's not got a phone or anything then? Well... Right, no, here's one for you. Should they be on, should they should the Australian players should it should it be stipulated that they will have to have played for a home nation before they can select for Great Britain? So Coop, for instance, would be okay because he's played for Scotland. So he's shown a bit of commitment already to his heritage nation. 
So should we say that Great Britain players, the only way you can be selected for Great Britain is if you've already got at least one cap for England, Ireland, Scotland or Wales? Mm, I don't know. It's it. No, I, I disagree. I disagree on that one. Right, so have you got any more or can we move on? Uh, we have got quite a few more. David Taylor says, Watch NRL tweeted that we will, sh- we will be showing Fiji versus Lebanon. Uh, and some more versus Papua New Guinea this weekend, as well as more Origin games. There you go. So if it, if it, <laughs> it doesn't answer your question regarding Sky Sport was showing it, but if you do want to see it, then, uh, which we have in the office here, and it's very good quality. Yeah. So uh, so get on it if, if you really want to watch the game. Someone says, what's your opinion on the Tonga versus uh, New Zealand game? I I personally uh, am tipping Tonga to to win. I actually think they they've got a better squad this time around. And I will mention, go back to the heritage, there's all this buzz about Tonga and Samoa and Fiji at the minute, um, and most of their players were born in Australia and New Zealand. And there's all this buzz set. Yeah, but... but and, yeah. And, no, wait, wait, and it's these same people, same English fans, who are saying this, oh, Tonga are great, Tonga are, are brilliant for rugby league. And then they're the slating the likes of Lachlan Coote, who's Australian born, Scotland international, because he might make the Great Britain squad. And, and it's the exact same going on with players who were born in New Zealand representing Tonga and so on. And I'm not saying there's anything bad because I'm all for, for using heritage players and I'm all for, for growing the game because if it, if it makes international rugby, rugby league grow stronger as a sportive, uh, some of the New Zealand born and Australian born players are committing to, um, to the families and, and, and committing to the family heritage. But the the, the the same people who were who were saying, uh, oh, how can Coop play for Great Britain? Australian, and and then they're also loving the the fact that Fiji and Tonga are, are excelling. Is it, is it not because? Scene. But is it not because, because we're Fiji. perceived to be a tier one nation? So it's like, in the, yeah, it's great for Tonga and Fiji to have Australians because ultimately Australia is seen as a level above them. And is the concern that we don't want to be seen, Great Britain or England doesn't want to be seen at the same level as Tonga and Fiji or whatever. We want to be seen at the same level as Australia. And I think that's probably where that comes from. A last point on international before we look ahead to this weekend's games. Drew did a bit of digging this week. There's a new player. Oh, there is. There is. There's a new player in Super League. He's come from Rugby Union. He's signed for Warrington Wolves. It's Luther Burrell. Now, you tell everyone what's excited you about Luther Burrell. Well, <laughs> he's, a, he's of um, mixed nationality, Luther Burrell. He's obviously, I think he's played 15 times for England in rugby union, but he's also represented the West Indies in the Hong Kong Sevens. His father is Jamaican, Jeff, I think his name was. Uh, so that obviously he obviously qualifies to play for Jamaica Rugby League as well as England. Uh, we don't know. He's he's not played a game of professional rugby league yet, so we don't know. He might be uh, hopeless for we, all we know. He might get Man of Steel in 2019, uh, 2020, sorry. Do or, a job to get in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> then again, the way the voting's going in the Man of Steel, he could get it. <laughs> or, um, or, he, or he could represent his, his father's heritage and his, his family's heritage and, and play for Jamaica. If, if Luther Burrow play for Jamaica in the 2021 World Cup, what a team they will have. They, they could have the Ben Jones Bishop on the wing, Louis Teeny also qualifies to, to play for Jamaica, um, Mason Caton Brown qualifies to play for Jamaica, uh, Ashton Golden has uh, played for Jamaica last year in the America's Championship. You could have There's a very a good team, there. Luther Burrow, Ross Peltier from Bradford. James Woodburn Hall, uh, Halifax's Challenge Cup of Europe. They could do with the halfback though, couldn't they? Decent they could. Halfback. Jamel Coleman's the, the current halfback for, for Jamaica. We'll, so we'll yeah, Drew, Drew's, Jamaica, Drew's Jamaica's biggest fan. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out on that one. We'll look ahead to the weekend's game. So um, before we do, thanks everyone for joining us Thursday, Rugby League lunch hour. We're going to do this every Thursday, 12 to 1, me, Drew and the sorted others. Um, uh, Lewis Banks also what? says I'm a Warrington fan and totally disagree with what the RFL have done to witness uh, it's under new management and the money should have been paid monthly to help them keep them going yeah they're certainly you know they're certainly struggling down there witness and knowing the, some of the people down there as to do um, you know obviously they've been pretty honest they've been pretty open they've been pretty conservative over their budgets um, and, 
and that's probably biting them in the backside. I think they, I think their plans to the RFL have been based on around three and a half thousand spectators. They're getting at least a thousand more than that, but the RFL aren't giving them any give or take. Um, thanks for your comments anyway. Let's look into the games tonight. A massive game Thursday night. This is what TV. This is what TV <laughs> games are made of. London Broncos, Hull KR. I don't want to see anyone moaning about the quality. I don't want to see any criticism of the quality. What an absolute raw rumble, relegation battle, six point or four point, whatever you want to call it. London Broncos, Hull KR, Ealing Trail Finders. Who's gonna win? I think Jill volunteered to work that one tonight. I have, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going with London, uh, and I think this is the. This could be the first time I've tipped London to win a game this season. Uh, because each I season tip them at home every week, to be honest. No, the only, no, the only no, weeks I've not tipped them, they've won. So. Um, yeah, this is the first time I'm, I'm tipping them after, well, it's the 19th week now. Um, <laughs> are they favourites this week, would you say? Well, I, I mean, you, I mean you look at OKR, since Tony Smith's taken over, they've beaten Warrington by two, they've lost, by, they've lost to Wigan by one. Pretty solid results. You know, for a first yeah. two games, um, you know, there's a bit of pressure on OKR because they. I, I, would you say that it's probably it, it's more important to Hull KR this game yeah. than London? Hundred percent. I bet uh, Elliot Keir was speaking to Gareth Walker of the Mirror. Uh, the pressure's a bit more on Hull KR. Yeah, and and, the, and he said all the pre- uh, Elliot Keir said all the pressure is on the other teams. It's not not on London. Everyone expected London to. To be at the bottom of the table, the pressure is mounting on OKR and, and Leeds Rhinos, uh, especially now. I know there's a couple of teams uh, above them, um, but especially on, on OKR and Leeds, I think it it, 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 it all depends on who, who handles the pressure the, the, the best out of London and uh, OKR. Don't, don't get me wrong, I think London will be feeling the pressure now because there is a little bit of belief there now that they, they can stay uh, in Super League. Um, but I'm tipping, I'm tipping London. I'm, I'm, and I'm, I must give a little bit of credit to uh, John and Abdul as well at, at London this year, because when I signed him in the, in the off season, I thought that that's a poor signing that because it 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 been it been in and out, hadn't it? Uh, uh, whole FC as a loose forward, as a half back, and I thought if he's going to be a starting half back, I think yeah, there's a pro, uh, you, you've got a problem there. At, at London, but he's been phenomenal for, for the Broncos this season. Obviously, he'll, he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll move he'll move to to Hull KR, uh, in twenty twenty. But he he's been a, a significant signing along with uh, Morgan Smith as well. We talk we talk about Golden Point. Now imagine they get to Golden Point and they go through the ten minutes and it's a draw. Leeds will be bottom of the table. Yeah. So that'd be an interesting well, one. It's not so, happen, is it, James? Well, you never know. Strange <laughs> things happen. So Friday night, there's four games on Friday night, and Huddersfield play Wigan now. Yeah. This is quite a big game as well because Huddersfield are the next in line, aren't they? So these bottom three, the bottom three have all gradually caught up to the pack and Huddersfield are the next in line. But then Wigan are only just on there. If Wigan win, they probably open up a little bit of a gap between them and the bottom. But if Huddersfield win, it, it boxes it all up again. Yeah, it certainly does. And it's a big game for Wigan, isn't it, as well? Because Wigan... The, the top five isn't out of the sights towards them yet, so they'll be going to, to, to get that top top five spot. But then Huddersfield also want to push that top five spot, and then both teams also want to win because they want to get into that little relegation there's, scrap there's, that's going on at the bottom. There's quite a few. Team. There's quite a few clubs now stuck in this almost pendulum, isn't it? Where one week they're yeah. winning and they're thinking top five, the next week they're losing and they're looking at the bottom. And Salford, Castleford, they play each other yeah. on Friday night. They're two other teams where. But I, I'll tip. I'll, I'll tip Wigan you go by Wigan. Oh, there Right. I, I think I've gone... I've gone Huddersfield, I think, on the immediate tipping league. Salford, Casper, uh, again, two other teams where, you know, they're only a win from being top five and only a loss for twi- you know from being relegation. I think both teams have been inconsistent this season, haven't they? I mean, I mean, Castleford and, and Salford are delight to watch on, on the days, aren't they? They, they play a brilliant attack in rugby. Um... But then, so other games, Salford are liable to get to get pumped. You know, they're, they're, they're a lot better at home, aren't they? Salford? Yeah, and and uh, Castleford have just been so inconsistent. They've been on a rocky road, aren't they? They're they're in a little bit of a transition season. Um, they're obviously missing Gale, and I know I know he's not played all year, but they're obviously missing him. Truman has had to do a lot of the work in the middle of the park on his own uh, this season, which I think he struggled a bit with because I think he's more of a second receiver, and and you let him do. Uh, his own stuff on the back of what Luke Gale does. 
Uh, and obviously they're missing the likes of Alex Foster and uh, Ollie Holmes, the starting back rows as well, which will be a big miss. I'll, I'm going to tip Salford for this one. I think I've gone Salford as well. Saints Leeds, um, which is uh, probably not a great fixture for Leeds to be having no, at this point. I'll be, I'll be there for loverubbleague.com covering it at the Total Wiki Stadium. Uh, for, oh, there's only there's all the one winner in this one, isn't there? Isn't there in well, St. Thomas? I'll go St. Thomas by 18. They're going to absolutely slap the Rhinos. Right. The, the now, Rhinos are going to get the bottom spanked. Now, now this is a bit disappointing, and I've raised this a few times, but the fourth game on Friday night is Warrington Wakefield, and I'm not saying it's disappointing because it's Warrington against Wakefield. I'm disappointed that there's four games on Friday night, which means that, you know, the live, you know, when we talk about broadcast deals and all that palaver. Ultimately, the viewing figures for Saints, Saints Leeds are going to be down because there's three other games on. Well, even even reporters as well, not not yeah. just bro- not 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 just uh, for, for TV deals mm-hmm. and, and, t- and and broadcasters. Reporters can only get to one mm-hmm. game on the Friday night, yeah. whereas if if what another was on a Saturday and another were on a Sunday, then obviously reporters can get to more games and it gets more coverage. But then you'll have everyone morning again on on Sunday. Um, yes, Sunday that there's there's nothing in the papers on. On rugby league, when all four games, well, five games would have been already been and gone. Uh, four on the Friday, and obviously London all count on the Thursday. But, Wait, uh, Wayfield wobbling a little bit, and they're sort of one of these teams now that's starting to look a bit mm. over the shoulders and, and potentially being sucked in by this gricky no, I don't, relegation. I, 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 think, I think Chris Chester just said that to be fair to, uh, to maybe. Kick his, his team up the backside a little bit. I don't, I, I don't but they're, they're, they're not going to be in a relegation battle whatsoever. I think they're not going to beat Warrington, though. No, they're, they're not going to beat Warrington. I think I'm tipping Warrington for the win. But obviously, the the, the welcome return of David Fafita he'll make a, a big difference for for Trinity this week. Um, but they're still doing it tough. Connor Bailey set to set to debut. Titus Guaze. Uh, could make his debut as well, and obviously, well, <laughs> Warrington are coming off the back of a loss. He would have had a, a, a good week in training under Steve Price this week, and uh, Daryl Clark and Joe Pilgrim return as well. So they've got plenty of fire uh, firepower back the walls. Uh, I'm, t- I'm tipping Warrington for that one. Uh, Saturday night, staying in Super League. Saturday night, Catalan Hull. Um, the, is... ba- the battle of the inconsistent yeah. two, but then they both turn around and say, "Why well, not? We're third and fourth in the league." <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it's well, Catalans are, are very, very good at home, aren't they? I know they, they lost to, to London last week, but I'm, I'll be tipping. I've gone um, home. I've gone home by a Mark Snead drop goal. That's what I've got. Actually, I think I've tipped all, you know. I've, I didn't really I thought Hull, this morning. I thought Hull were very good at Castle last week. I thought the way they managed that game and... Um, I've tipped one of them by seven and I can't remember if it's uh, Catalans yeah. or uh, Hull that I've tipped. So I've got a goal with tipping Catalans by seven. That's, you know... You pretty much, if you want to earn some money, you get Hull on to score a drop goal yeah. every week. That'll earn you a, yeah. a bit of coin. Um, that that'll be a, a, a cracking game, that though. That's on Sky. That's sports, on Sky five right? o'clock Saturday. Um, championship then, um, a full program seven championship games this weekend, starting on Friday night. On Friday night, we've got Sheffield Rochdale. Um, Sheffield's still going pretty well. They had a little bit of a wobble yeah, a few weeks ago, and they've, they've pulled out a couple of results. Yeah, they had a, a bit of a wobble, didn't they? And, and against Rochdale, they were they were just down in the dumps at the minute I'm probably a good, good fixture for Sheffield to sort of consolidate their chase for the top yeah. five um, Witness Batley is another one on Friday night Witness suffering with loads of injuries um, got a real ropey second string as well um, yeah Jacob Dugdale's a hooker yeah. Um, but yeah Witness missing Owens they're missing Craven they're missing Ryan Ince they're missing Jordan Johnston um, I'll go with all my advantage on that one James Witness. Batley beat Witness in the reverse fixture as well Witness probably, you know, you wouldn't imagine Witness aren't going to get relegated. They're not going to finish in the bottom two, but every time they lose, you sort of mm. look and thinking, oh, well, maybe. Mm. Uh, you know, Witness lost last week to Featherstone and, and Barrow picked up a good win, and um, that closed the gap a little bit. And um, I think, yeah, we've got Witness that one. Saturday, um, a revenge mission perhaps as Toronto played Toulouse. Of course, Toulouse absolutely slapped Toronto in the reverse fixture. But it's in Canada, this one, isn't it? Yeah, it's in Canada this one. Um, oh, first time Toulouse have been there, because of course last year they played this game at Magic Weekend. I'm going to go uh, Toronto I, on this. I, I can't I, I'd, I, love I just... to watch, I'd love to watch a Toronto game on Sky, a home Toronto game that was competitive, to be brutally honest. Well, you might get that this, this weekend, um, James. You know, to be brutally honest. Um, 
I can't have premium games. right here. Bradford Halifax. Bradford Halifax is the R League live game. Uh, okay. Both of those teams struggling a little bit. Um, Halifax have struggled all season, really. They've had a few purple patches where they've picked up wins. Bradford have sort of fallen off the wagon a little bit since the cup defeat. Um, I know they beat Batley a couple of weeks ago, but they've been slipping up. And these are two teams that really they need to pick up the wins to keep up the pace for top five. You know, Toronto and Toulouse set a decent pace. York keep on winning there up there. Featherstone are a really good knit. Lee are recruiting really well and they're up there. And Bradford and Halifax, when we were looking at maybe eight teams scrapping over this top five, Bradford and Halifax are in danger of being left behind a little bit. Yeah, they, yeah, they certainly are. I'm going to go with Bradford on this occasion just because obviously they, they lost to Halifax in the Challenge Cup and I think they'll want a bit of revenge though. Uh, Dewsbury Lee, so Lee have re signed Corey Patterson this week. That's their 13th, I think. 13th play that Lee have re signed this season that was previous at the club in previous years. And obviously, they signed Jordan Thompson as well from another re signed uh, from Bull uh, FC last week until the end of the season. Two very, Gareth, very good signs. Gareth, well. Gareth Hock as well is only a few weeks away from fitness. Lee. Um, we fancy Lee, don't we? We've just got this yeah. bizarre feeling that we fancy Lee to win the grand final. The, the lobby gobblers are going up. And, and I think I think what strikes me about Lee is when Beaumont was there a couple obviously Beaumont's still there, but when he was when they had their best time, Lee, it was when they built a, a team of players that cared about Lee, wanted to play for Lee, you know, the likes of Greg McNally and Martin Mujan and stuff, and it felt like when they went up to the Super League, they, they were sort of started to lose that. And then certainly last season, the way Beaumont recruited was, was awful. Um, they splashed the cast in. Yeah, and they, and they just, yeah, just, and, and they just really lost that the they lost that sort of leanness, if you yeah. want, for want of a better word. Whereas now it feels like they've understood that actually it's that sort of thing that brings a club together. John Duffy's recruited them back. And, you know, ultimately, all you've got to do is get in that top five, get to the grand final, as soon as you're in the grand final, like London Broncos proved last year, you've got 80 minutes. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. So, and I, we I, can't I, say Lee to beat Dewsbury, yeah. do we? Lee to beat Dewsbury. Yeah, uh, I, yeah I, think, I think Lee could get promotion this year. Feathers, another team that Featherstone, to be fair, are up there. They're third, I think, in the table now. Featherstone, or fourth, maybe. Featherstone against uh, Barrow. Um... Now, Featherstone is an interesting one because I, you know, I've, I've seen them a, a few times this season and, and one, I, I see them and they look really good and I've seen them look really bad. Um, but they've got, you know, they've got a young coach, they've got a few decent, you know, Cameron King, a few decent players floating around. Is the key to Featherstone's season going to be what Leeds players they get in the running? I think that's been the, the situation for a couple of years now, isn't it, James? Um, They've, they've had the likes of Ashton Golding playing for them all season. Ashton, Ashton Golding's in double figures now in, t- in terms of uh, Featherstone appearances this season. Uh, but obviously, Leeds are apparently recalling this week. Uh, they actually so, hit him last week because I'm sure Ashton Golding played in Callum Turner's shirt last week. Serious? I believe so, yeah. Uh, uh, but, that's an interesting one. Uh, but yeah, I, th- I think Leeds are, are on about recalling him, aren't they, for, uh, for this weekend's game because obviously. Too low here. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, 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 on, he's on not top of notice that he's not there. And, um, <laughs> oh, fe- fe- Barrow picked up a good win last week. Barrow's best chance of getting wins is surely at home, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, they've got a, they've got a, a nice little tough ground. It is a it's a cliche, but it's a tough yeah. place to go going up. I like, I like going to Barrow. It's, it's always a mud bath, isn't it? Yeah, I like going to Barrow. Though. Swinton York is the final game on Sunday. York. Um, are obviously up there they're fighting for this top five place done a really good job all season but Swinton had a, a brilliant victory at Toulouse last week and um, Swinton probably now you know they're, they're nowhere near the top you know competing with the top half mm-hmm. but they're almost they're pulling away yeah yeah, yeah if they, if, and look, a win this weekend and they're almost like mid-table consolidation sort of team aren't they um, which is good progress for Swinton and Andy Mays uh, yeah I, I think York will have just a little bit too much for them uh, this week. I think that that winning to lose might have took it out of the players a little bit. They might have, they might the players might have gone a bit bit hard on the beers afterwards uh, because it was a fantastic result. I'm sure they said they flew on really? straight after the match. Yeah. Ah oh, right. So so they they avoid, they have, they have a couple right. of beers. Depends yeah. if they went out for a pub lunch on yeah. Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go with, I'll go with York on that one. But we've before got one, we finish one, we've got one more comment from uh, Joshua Walker saying. Uh, players should only be allowed to uh, play for Great Britain if they have previously played for England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. 
Or the primary na nation is one of the four. That's what we said. That's, so, that's what you said, not that's what, what I, I said. said. Thank you for joining us. The th uh, Rugby League Lunch Hour. We're going to do this every Thursday, 12 till 1 o'clock. Um, if you've missed any of the show, it'll stay on the Facebook page. We'll put it on a podcast. We'll put it on YouTube. Um, thanks for joining us and we'll see you very soon.